Hi, I'm Nikki Johnston. I have worked in nursing for over 30 years now. Um, the research that we've been doing uh, recently is um, improving, trying to improve experiences of older people in residential aged care um, to, to die better, to live well and to die better. Um, it's been really important to me to focus on this research as there is a real urgent international need to do this better. Up until now, um, there has been no evidence-based clinical trials done around integrating specialist palliative care into residential aged care. Um, so that's none internationally. Nobody has looked at this space before. Um, there's a changing landscape. Older people are living in residential aged care because they no longer um, can care for themselves. They're often living with multi-morbid conditions because medicine has allowed us to live for longer. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're living better. Um, the complexity of people living in residential aged care and their healthcare needs are very high. They wouldn't be there otherwise. Um, so what's really important is that we, we've noticed that there's a problem. We've we've isolated a need and we've uh, produced and tested very vigorously um, a new model of care. That, that we've got results from our 1700 participants with our randomised control trial, a step wedge methodology, um, and the results have shown that we've reduced hospital stays, um, reduced hospital transfers um, by quite a lot because um, when you're older and you're often confused um, and very frail, hospital's not always a safe place. We need the community to understand this now. Um, and we also realised that there's a whole workforce out there that haven't been taught how to care for people at end of life. Um, they're fantastic people who really care. None of us know how to do this unless we're taught. So that's part of our integration model. We ca we've come together, specialist palliative care has come together with residential aged care. There's 28 facilities in Canberra. Um, together we can do this work well. There's been challenges along the way. First of all, um, I'm a nurse practitioner. There were laws or legislation in the ACT that said only medical practitioners could prescribe opioids. So we had to change the law. Um, nursing saw that as, as a challenge and we did it. Um, we've changed regulation un under certain um, uh, other, other, other regulations around opioids and other medicines so that we can do our work. We have system barriers to good care in residential aged care and it's because of the funding model that we're working in. States fund specialist palliative care and the Commonwealth funds residential aged care. Across Australia, a lot of residential aged care facilities, um, no state funded initiatives can walk through the front door. So we crossed that barrier. We said, we're gonna do that. We're gonna say, we're, we're saying that the residents in Canberra are our oldest Australians. Um, they deserve a state funded specialist palliative care service. So we crossed that barrier and went in. Um, the best thing about that from a government point of view is that we saved them a lot of money. So the state government benefited, everyone wins. Um, one other barrier that we, we have crossed is hierarchy in systems, in healthcare systems. Um, hierarchy can, can create barriers to good patient care uh, because only certain people can do little bits of a job and, and everyone's job isn't valued the same. Where I work, I'm, I'm a palliative care nurse practitioner at the highest level of nursing possible clinically in Australia. I work with carers, cooks, cleaners, 
um, registered nurses, enrolled nurses, assistants in nursing, managers of facilities that have no care background at all. All of us are important. We just do different jobs. So every single one of us is needed. Let's break down the hierarchy. Everyone is important if we're going to provide the best end of life care for these older people. It, it's a massive honour. Um, to, to be honest, it's not easy to accept a, an award like this. Um, I've worked with amazing people throughout my career. I've had really good mentors. And um, it, yeah, it, it's not easy to sort of separate yourself and think, why am I any different to anyone else? We're all doing a good job. Um, but the other thing that I, I, I love about this is that it's going to give us a little bit more traction to get some more funding and to get our ideas out there. So um, if people see you as a leader and they've been awarded for, for leadership, uh, governments take notice. People who are funding take notice. Um, I, it would be my hope that we can roll this out across Australia. Ever since I was a little girl, I used to have, I used to care for animals. I used to take animals off the street. <laughs> um, now I, I really have a passion for people who are vulnerable, people who don't have an advocate, people who don't fit in to our system of healthcare. Um, there's lots of people that don't fit. Uh, our healthcare system and our community values cure. A lot of people are never going to be cured. They live and they manage their disease. Others die from their disease. Others die because they're old and frail. They don't even have a disease. So let's not medicalise all of this as much and care for where the person is. Let's meet them where they are and respect them for who they are. And nursing gives me the ability to advocate for people um, and speak up, give a voice to those that can no longer speak for themselves. Um, nursing gives me so many opportunities to, to do that. Mm -hmm.